Well, hello. Greetings. This is Jeff. And Fox. With. Final. Boss. Editing. <gasps> So we're gonna be going, doing some editing. We're actually doing editing for the once ever, and we're doing our our old, 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 very first thing we used to do was That's to read started. through amateur. This is how it all started. Uh, we used to read through amateur offerings together uh, and rate and vote on the best screenplay. So that's what we're doing right now. We're gonna be reading through these uh, log lines. There's five log lines up here, and then we're gonna pick one to zoom into, or sorry, two, uh, one or two to zoom into. Uh, depending on how sleepy we are, how much we want to play uh, video games, uh, and then we'll, oops, that is not what I intended at all. And then we're going to uh, talk about them, edit them, and then send the notes. We will do voices. We will do voices, confirmed. Depends on how much whiskey we have, which mm -hmm. will hopefully be a good amount. Uh, okay, so the first one is The Notorious Nedley James, in a deranged post-apocalypse. Yay, I wrote, I wrote a post, I'm writing a post-apocalypse novel. Like post it's great, post-apocalypse is awesome. A renowned 12-year-old girl... Killer. Well, killer. The renowned 12 year old killer uh, plots to steal a mysterious map from the elusive crime boss responsible for her father's brutal death. I like that one. What's going on there? Doing it. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm Confirmed. Um, though I don't like. The first page is a lot of voiceover. That's it. That's a little risky. But God, she's a unique and special. It's physics. Enough. Right here. The, it's like the first page. So I kind of uh, – my first indication would be that a something like this is very a telly opening. Listen to me carefully. She's just a 12-year-old girl. Like, I don't know. We'll see. But a very heavily voiceover that is, seemed to be mainly around exposition, and hopefully that could be shown. It's like, could you tell me that without the narration also telling me what it looks like we might be seeing on, this, on the screen? John Wick and a bunch of dudes. And deadly, but also twelve. Yeah, like so. That's that's when um, when the voiceover is. Shots of kind of like John Wicking. I don't think you should reference other movies in your. Yeah, I don't disagree. I think it's it's a, it can like be allowable, kind but of it's telling. like yeah. No, I agree. Anyway, so looks a little risky, but I think I like the Sounds premise good, enough yeah. to try it. Practice made hey. perfect. That your fan. Hello. Hey, what's up? We're doing a long, doing overdue. an edit. Long yes. overdue edit. That's our namesake. <laughs> Editing. All I do is write on this <laughs> channel now. Um, a determined woman breaks an African terrorist leader out of prison in order to exchange him for her kidnapped husband. Okay. Eh. I don't mm. love political movies. I don't uh, care. Man. Get a in those links off on his face. Yeah. El Dorado on a case to track down a missing girl, a detective partners with the tortured ghost of his dead brother to uncover a conspiracy that will prevent the construction of Hoover Dam. The story is this the story is based hundred percent on an out of body experience I had when I was partnered with a detective of the ghost of his dead brother. Are you high? Was huh. Are you asking the the writer? Yeah. Was he high? <laughs> I've been taking time to write a grand total of two paragraphs. Hey, you know what? It is okay to write slow. Paragraphs. As long as you are writing. It uh, doesn't matter. It does not matter the speed. Um, just go easy on it. That's what I'm having and, and what the foxy lady has to remind me uh, is, you know, you've got to go easy on yourself. You cannot beat yourself up too much as a writer. Because if you're that hard on yourself, you'll never want to show up to the page. That's true. You'll just be like, I don't want to feel like crap every day, so I'm not going to write because I stress myself out about it. I feel like crap. On a safari trip, a family are driven off-road. Family is driven off-road. So the, it yeah, should be it should a family be. is. Yeah. So I'm going to lean against Unless that because the grammar are... but yeah, no, you... is driven off-road by rhino poachers and forced to survive a harrowing night in the brush. A lot of words on the first page. Yeah. Look at that first page. Look at the first page. That's yeah, it's a words. lot. It's a block. Block of words. Yeah, not too much dialogue getting in there. Um, a young student, and those are like big old thick lines, you know, three or four each. But, you know. okay. Yeah, a young student dies in an accident, and unbeknownst to his family, is replaced with an artificial intelligence. Hmm. What do you think it's should be our a, second? If it's not a, I think that would be second. 
Yeah. I'm just worried because it seems like that should be like a comedy or something. I don't know. Like, but I don't AI feel a stuff. conflict coming through that. There's, yeah. It's just a situation. There's no complication. Yeah, at least in the log line. Yeah. Which... Like, I don't know if it's about the, the AI person. I don't know if it's about the family. I might, my vote, too, is going to be Helderado. Okay. Yeah, what do you anyways. think? Yeah, you think that's really good for the second one? Yeah. I'm intrigued by the fact that this guy had an out of body experience. Yeah, I mean, the. I, I want to know so. what that was like. El Dorado. Why don't you come to right. your So the senses. first one we're going to do is the. Uh, Desperado. The Desperado. Yeah. Or, sorry, whatever the uh, Notorious. Notorious. <laughs> The notorious some of the exclamation points there. Alright, page one. Let's get down to beeswax here. I it's need a to put a little. Really? Is it a self published I don't know. It says based on the children's book, Naughty Natalie goes to town. It's like a horrifying children's book. Yeah. Uh, anyways. Post apocalyptic. I've never heard of a post apocalyptic children's book, but yeah, very loosely based, perhaps. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm look it up. You know, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, yes. Days get in touch. So kind of this this casual get in touch. That's okay, but it feels it smacks of unprofessionalism. I'm not going to write a note about that, but just uh, something to be aware of is that that doesn't as a person who used to read a lot of scripts. What up, Mister? My mean miser walrus. How's it going? We're doing some script editing tonight. You came in just in time. Dark, dark horn. Dark. Dark Horse, welcome. You came Hello. in just in time as well. Howdy, 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 everybody. Howdy. Uh, I'm going to scroll my chat down so I can actually read. Uh, my notes. Well, I think I could find it in a romance novel. Yeah, it looks like that's a self published book. You've got a cyborg lover. Natalie oh. Naughty, number one. Oh. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Okay. I don't think that's really Doesn't sound like a children's book. <laughs> no. Anyways, so maybe maybe it is. What up, mean mean Mr. Walrus? I hope you uh your tusks are at the ready. <clears throat> People have paid to see the film. Forty minutes of trailers. Advertisements have passed and now against black. Everyone eagerly waits to see a movie everyone is speaking I don't like about. This. Would it I don't be like as good it. as they say it is? Anticipation anticipation settles, you're strong. Yes, you the reader is making too much noise. But any second now you set off a journey for an hour. So, it seems I don't like, like it. yeah. Well, Go ahead. yeah, yeah. I, very hard to. This how is this gonna look on screen? Just gonna be black and like the sound of a straw. Yeah. Um, these are for the exact film you just paid to see. Wasted forty minutes to watch starts. So a lot of these jokes. Uh. Yeah, a lot of these jokes just don't translate to film. A lot of these you know, snazzy talking jokes in the action don't translate well to film. And they don't. And like, remember, you're not writing a story. You're not writing a novel. You're writing a blueprint for a movie. And so does the fact that this is so hard. It would be it's extremely difficult for me to, as the reader to visualize what this would look like for one and, and two because you're not like right now you're only seen as somebody sitting in a theater and you haven't even had a normal slug line there's no slug line up here to tell me where i'm at that's a problem you need a slug line i need a slug line you know it's really you know you look at the seating partner in utter bewilderment so i have no idea what scene we are. It seems like they're trying yeah. to talk to, about us, but it's like... Yeah. And is it going to be like first-person POV where it like whips over and it like whips back and like the whole camera Or is shift? it just how you want them to react to it, in which case it shouldn't even be there? Yeah. I think it's one thing if it's part of the movie, if, if it like opens in a movie theater, but to try and, mm -hmm. say that, to try and tell the audience how they're going to react to this opening before it even starts... That's the ultimate telling. Yeah, and that's I think Fox hits it on the head, right? Is you want to evoke emotion. You want whatever the action of the scene is driving, the reader should 
should be like, wow, I am in awe and bewildered. Like, you should never tell me I'm thinking that. Especially, um, you know, I, I guess that could represent what the actors are doing, but then it sounds like you're also in first person. Usually whenever you use you in a screenplay, you're telling me the camera is in first person. Another kind of, uh, you know, that's a trickier thing that you don't, you don't use it often, but it, that's how it normally yeah. reads. I can't tell if it's, yeah, like this, on this actual screen, there's going to be, it's going to be like you're a person in a movie theater, or if it's going to be, if it's going to just open with this, this part, the, yeah. the Mark Petrie Nazca, and you're just trying to tell us how we're going to feel leading up to it, and then as it starts. You know, like, I don't know if it's part of the movie, or if it's, like, you being, like, okay, the audience is going to have come to see this movie, and then I'm going to blow their minds with this happening. Because it's, like, you shouldn't have... Unless it's part of the movie. Unless there is going to be, like, a scene of people in a movie theater. But it's still kind of odd wording, right? It should be people yeah. in the movie theater turn to each other, confused, yeah. and on with the... I don't know, right? Yeah, I agree. I think it's definitely a, an odd and an opener, and one I wouldn't recommend um, keeping in its current form. Um, especially absence of slug lines. That's a bit of a um, feels a little unprofessional. Um, truly epic piece of orchestral music. Sorber obliterates Earth. Okay, listen to me very carefully. Shot. One's where bloody Natalie James is holding, so it's like shots of her. Like, no! She's just a 12 year old girl. Now we continue to more gloomy shots facing black. Production mm -hmm. logos appear. But like, gloomy shots are kind of vague still. Yeah, yeah. That's actually a really great note. What do these gloomy shots mean? And, and we were going to go a little faster. What? Uh, <laughs> describe. He does like one, he gives like two examples. He gives like two examples. But I'd rather have like specific, like a shot of her facing yeah. an army, a shot, and then a shot of her like standing on a pile of corpses. It's sweet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I, I think I, I totally agree with Fox here, where you should describe most, if not all, of them. Because like, what you're pretty much leaving it up to whoever's filming this to choose. So it's like, you know, like what what, did it, what does the writer actually want me to do here? I don't know. Just imagine the production person trying to, like, piece that together. You know, uh, she isn't a superhero, or God. More trailer shot. John waking a bunch of people. Again, um, show, don't tell. What does that look like? She karate kicks someone, dives over another man. You know, is it unique or special? No, she's not. She dodges sparks, but at least you're giving us scenes there. That's good. Defies physics. There has to be a convoy of some sort. Now it keeps on a series of moving vehicles. She's just. It's a See, this is good. Like specific, specific child. images. That's yeah. better. Um, so, yeah, I think those are different. Violence grows until the music stops. <sighs> Of the... On the verge of effing puberty, find her tracker. Wait, wait, I'm confused though. Is this somebody in the movie theater? Or is yeah. this. Oh, is this the narrator? Okay. Over, oh, okay. Well, I think he's the person that's like in the trailer, like, you know, like in the John. It's like literally the John Wick trailer where yeah. they have the Russian guy talking and he's like, I don't care if you kill this dog and like all this stuff is happening. He's like, I don't care about his little puppy. Like, that's pretty much what... Okay, but now we're just seeing him. Yeah. Got it, got it, okay. I don't care about a little puppy, man. Well... In the space, the soil fire rips through atmosphere, oh, blowing oh, oceans. Sorry, Turn towards your seating partner to notice their behavior. Drench themselves with their soda, their both look at one another. Yeah, again, I don't know if that's... Yeah. Like... That's the said, camera's gonna be like somebody's that's head turning to... A little somebody. too meta, I would say. Because you actually have your normal scene. 
you have the you know the night night sky like why do we need we're about to watch the movie why do we need a preview for the movie that takes two pages before we actually just like start the movie which it looks like what's happening the gosh right now things changing Natalie James the girl we saw in the teal looks up at the sky mech drops in front of her earth shattering grips her shotgun this is a cyborg ocelot type of cat drops up beside her two mechanical arms rockets controlling the mech as a priest bearded the arms on the mech oh, shifting things cannons and aim at natalie if it's god you're looking for natalie you will not find him here you ready mom are you sweetheart <laughs> Ocelot's Ocelot. Ocelot. she is consciousness downloaded into the body. How would we Ocelot. know that? Yeah. That's the she calls her mom, but still. A bit. Yeah, again, that's a big, big stretch. And then the, so yep, like, it's yeah. going to be one of those stories is a little on the nose. I don't know if he, the movie trailer bit. It's just, you know, this feels like a lot of performance. It's like, but it, I'm beginning to worry that there will be a lack of substance. You know, we are on page three, which those first five, ten pages are everything. Uh, and I haven't gotten much substance yet besides your log line just getting repeated a few times. Uh, and like kind of this funny situation that could be good, but then I already am a little nervous as the reader. So I would say, I don't know if all this will pay off. Like, immediately, like, you know, like, it's like, uh, your spidey senses are tingling, where you're just like, oh, what's gonna happen now? It seems, like, a little chaotic. Um, so remember, the goal, you have a good logline, just tell me that story, I will watch it. Um, but don't tell me you're telling me the story, and then tell me that you're starting at the end of the story you're telling me, and don't then tell, tell me... how me, awesome the story is. Yeah, don't tell me how awesome your story is. Just make it so don't awesome even, that don't I can't Don't even look reference away. the fact that I'm reading a story. Yeah. Tell a story. Yeah. That's just my pet peeve. Oh yeah. How can we see the the spirit if there, you know, if we were watching this. All right. Oh, Priest. Your man, Natalie. Just like you in that wet blanket of a mother. This, it ends here, as I have no problem demolishing you in this life or in the effing next. Rockets are ejected out of the Met arms, which roar and spin the series of rockets, bombard the desert day, Natalie and Sabatu run to safety. Seems kind of an easy out. <laughs> like, okay, cool, rockets. I'm just going to run. Um, I'd want to see her do something more clever. But his rockets stumbles on the ground before sliding behind a jet engine and fires a shotgun, which caused the, which caused the mech is jammed. Yes, remember, grammar, grammar in those early pages. Um... um Sprinting, crazy, of it. She reaches the cockpit, that is, and just touches him, bloody. Diane. Mechanical arm rips her off. Here she hits the ground as a scout. Scorch lamps to day. The sun beats down upon this desert world, and we see towns being swallowed up by sand, people dying from thirst. The scorched landscape is inhospitable in parts. But yeah. Mm -hmm. Writing into a genre, Danielle. Mm -hmm. Shanty town effect breaks out over a small can of soda. Finally, we settle on something. A large ranch, closed by a massive circular sand dune. Horse paddock, two barns, a guest house, and stables. It's called Lindar's Pretty House. Title. Six years earlier. I feel like this is where your story starts. This is where I would start. Yeah. You know, the barn, like, just start with the back, like, what happened to cause her epic rage, you know. Mechanical workshop, upstairs a wooden attic, Natalie Jane's innocent, scrappy and eclectic, works on a mechanical animal, fixing its wiring, 
Um, you know, why not just start the story here? I mean, you have like two intros. Like it's it feels like there's a little this bit. This is like the third intro. Actually. Yeah, this is the third intro. Old as ass. Foreigner. Sleeping beside her is Sabatu, who's less cyborgish than at the beginning. And they pricks her thumb on some metal. How how do we see this? How do we see this, Sabatu? Like uh um what does less cyborgish look like? That's like is there she was a cat. Are there more bits of cat? I'll <laughs> <laughs> uh, just clarify. Just yeah. clarify. Just like, what will we see? Um, so, ow, I'm cold as ice. I'm willing to eat a little mice. You're silly. Becky and James, young, weary, tired. Wait. Like James. Well, I can't read. He needs her. Her. Show, show, show. What? Because remember, we're watching this film. We're not, nobody is going to read the screenplay, you know, in the theaters. So you have to communicate that without her, what is he? Maybe she gets into trouble and he's like, baby, baby. And he like freaks out and is like, oh, I'm so glad you're safe. But it was like something really stupid and small. That's a way that we can be like, oh, like this dad is freaking out over her, like stumbling in a ditch. You know, he is an obsessive father like he he needs this daughter more than she needs him like those are the types of things that you just need to, to show uh blake says cross-legged takes her hand flexions are filthy boom too slow hey high five does he do like that slaps him and then she moves out of the way he sucks playfully too slow okay they're doing the little high five um, yeah, you're far too good. Blake looks at the mechanical beast half finished, but a marvel look at it. He looks at his daughter in awe. This was your big secret? Mm hmm. Do you like it? Sweetheart, this is incredible. She glows from this kind of praise. He strokes it and checks the wiring. No, no, the. Well, the, he means the, he, that's a misplaced I know, I know. modifier. I know. <laughs> yeah, it's a Sorry. misplaced modifier, but yes. It just yeah. sounded funny. <laughs> he strokes it. <laughs> And gives her praise. Yeah, yeah, beware of those. <laughs> what does it do? Gets control and presses the button. The mechanical beast comes to life. The headless beast, more miniature horse than anything. And it stomps mechanical hooves and trots awkwardly along. Blake looks at her. How the hell has he been so lucky? I don't like that. Okay. I, I, I mean, some writers can get away with it. It is allowed. It's like one of those things that everyone's like, permissible love in screenplay writing. Uh, so it's allowed, you know, you can do those little asides. You can't do them all the time and you're, do, you're doing them very, very frequently, which I would avoid, but can you find a way to visually evoke this? We're in a visual storytelling medium, really push. You just can't use interiority here. You just can't, uh, this isn't a novel, uh, at least in my, some people kind of allow a little bit of that in screenplay writing. I'm a little bit more on the, um, side the other side of that you take it after your mom i wouldn't look after and she didn't like he looks at sabato and sits beside him still feels weird to him that it that it's his wife we don't know that yet there's nothing that tells us except for that one line um uh, yeah i don't know um it's his wife thing. Yeah, when did she appear how long did she Feels hyper unestablished. What's well, the ocelot? Oh. Yeah. So that's, I think, what breaks down is like that. The only way we would have visually seen that is her talking to the thing like it was her mom when the priest blew her up. But how else, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Now watch, look. Mechanical beast is a little sidestep dance, but the smoke filters from it and crashes down. Natalie goes, lifts his body. Shoot. What do you need? Hold on. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Men. Men, they make no sense. 
boys. Just ridiculous. Soldering iron. Nothing. There's no such thing, I don't think. Soldering iron. Solder. Solder, S-A-U. <laughs> I think it's a word. Soldering. Just soldering. The word. Like that? <laughs> you got it here first, y'all. <laughs> I mean, you spelled it wrong. Yeah. Salter. <laughs> so uh final boss is right again. So that's the fantastic. That feels life. that feels amazing. First time in his this life. tingling He's feeling. About to die. Yeah. I died in a with moments of euphoria before my death. Here, you mind reading aloud? I'm gonna get a little snack that's not chocolate. Okay. I'm gonna grab some of these. Where were we? Um, uh, sure. Hands her it as she reaches inside the machine and works it. Here, let me see. Yeah, got a few wires loose. The short circuit? Yeah, me! It needs a... Conduit, hard to come by. Stop your problems. See if I can look out for one, but right now, kiddo, I need you to... No, please, just one more! We'll do that later, but I need those chores done, miss. Oops, but he ruffles her dry blonde hair and kisses her forehead, and she bows her head and lets out a defeated sigh. Hi. Come, Sabatu. Good way to talk to your mom. Yeah. So, yeah, but it's like a very like a, I don't know if it's like a robot, if it's an animal, if it's a person, if it's her mom. Right. Yeah, like, it feels like it's like ten different things. I don't know if Sabatu is robot, bomb, animal, or what percentage, you know? There's probably like no real description besides the ocelot. Yeah. <clears throat> but not a, they're less cyborg ocelot. They're more like actual ocelot or human. Yeah, it does feel a little uh, lightly defined, which is rough. Like, this is, is key, so I would really push towards those specifics. Um. Like okay, Natalie most the cow. You know, okay, Emily, who's hard. You should capitalize that name. Uh, every time we're first introduced to a character, all caps, even if it's a cow. Hardly not so fat. Motorcycle. Time to hide again. How do we know if the motorcycle shows down? Wait, Sabatu's the cat? But like, why is it talking now? I thought it was broken. It, it talked earlier. Hmm. Sim lover, hello, welcome. Oh, hello. Look at the post office zone. Okay. You can guys on motorcycles ride in. Names don't matter, but one of them. Shades off. Looks at the entire dryer. Guys. Back over here. Anderson. Folks. And there's a bush is past him, and there's a house. Three of the others following, like inches in size. Decorated in rich wood. Trying to open. Which is the back stairs leading upstairs. Where are we? So who's James? I'm really confused. I thought they saw these motorcyclists come in. And pushes past the lake and watches. Wait. Lake? That's her dad, right? Is it? Oh. We're in James' house. Who's James? It's like his. Ranch. Oh, did they. He did James' ranch. I don't know. I know some dad's sweat and licks it afterwards. <laughs> Kitchen. Like, 
So she hides. I think that's cool just in case. She ducks below. Yeah, let me see. Drink. Drink or something. Just step. It's very important. After it's. Yeah. <clears throat> after Anderson smacks us up in Lake. Great. Let's go. Lake grips the bench, trying to hide his shock. F. What? By how much? Well, if you wouldn't know then, we decided to go to the more profitable. So, 10%. 10% is a little steep. Why don't, hey, don't be looking at me with those gentlemen. Alright? It's his land, you're all not mine. Be thankful you have a roof over your head. He brings out a calculator and puts it here in a numbers deliberately. He's totally making this S up. He stops. Anderson. What is her birthday? April 23rd. So you don't mean what? 1030. Anderson, that's. Can we negotiate a little here? Two girl, even if. He doesn't say anything. Anderson knows he gets up. What? Um, About the girl. 1030 by next week. Pops by and sees a baby barely thinking happily. Starts with Anderson boiling point. I mean, to see that, what does yeah. that boiling point look like? So, a lot of this stuff, and maybe we, we can. We're already on page 10, pretty much, right? Maybe we'll check out the next one. Mm -hmm. See you then, Anderson, wait. We're going to. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. So I think he must have had an old love affair right, with her, right. but I don't know if the description, like, so, you need to, like, what does this reach of the boiling point looks like? Because he smashed the picture, we need to see action, remember, visual, visual, visual. Um, you know, I'm going to see page 8, you know, Anderson's connection with Victoria is interesting, but only understood... You know, telling. Can you show us an in scene reaction? Okay, so I would say uh, the good. I think it's a fun premise. And, like, cool character. You know, like the idea of a post apocalyptic world. Like the mechanical animal concept. And the setup, yeah. Mech animal are awesome subs. I'd say the uh, set to improve, um, you know, remove, you know, the extra setups. Um, it feels excessive. You know, Claire, you know, uh, in your writing, Show, show, show. Just try a draft, you know. Draft with no asides and no fancy stuff. And no references to other movies. Stuff or other movie references. It takes you out of the world, especially, you know, I want to go, if I want to watch Inglorious Bastards, if I want to watch whatever, I will. Like, I want to see, uh, you know, your world. Uh, so really think about what that means. Like, you know, how to evoke that and, like, what makes your world special? I think you do have some unique stuff with this, like, mech, half-human animal, half-mom brain. That's a really cool concept. Like, I think, you know, play to those strengths. Um, it's story-driven instead of, like, um, performance, <clears throat> like... This is going to be the most awesome thing you will ever witness. It's like, just focus on the story and, and you have a good concept and mm -hmm. that, that'll that happen on it. Don't write for style. <clears throat> <clears throat> style, like, uh, especially in screenplays, will never, will never, like, show on the screen. Like, you can write this beautiful prose. It's not going to, you know, no one's going to see beautiful prose unless it's in the dialogue. So really, really 
I would just say try or consider trying a draft. Just don't do anything fancy. Tell your story effectively. Let the drama and the characters speak for themselves. Because mm -hmm. it feels like you're trying to guide the reader so much in how we experience it that there's nothing left to experience, almost. There's just so much handrail. Especially with, like, opening a trailer. Like, well... Yeah, I don't know if that's a... Yeah, I wouldn't do that just because you want to save that. I'm guessing some of that stuff gonna happen unless it directly ties into the story unless it's like you know the villain I wouldn't I don't know how it would tie into the story but if like yeah like the somebody one of the main characters was watching it after the fact and it was like a made-up trailer about her life and they're like I remember her you now she's like famous I don't know whatever something like that I don't think it's yeah I would agree I would just say, you have a great concept. Yeah. You don't have to make it fancy. Just start with her as a girl. We want to see her go from innocent girl to badass anyways. So, it's a very logical place to start. Like, why, why, we, we already have probably seen the trailer if we're going to see this movie. We know the logline. We don't need to set it up with this, like, like, audience reacting to it and trailer. Cause it's like, no, we're already interested. We're already here because we're interested. Yeah. So just start with her her character journey. I agree. Hold her out of time. Well, I like this title page. It's simple. I like simple title pages. That's a simple band. Why won't you come to your senses? All right. Outside the New Orleans diner, a small beat up roadside restaurant, pines shaking its gentle breeze. Sun inches high in the sky. Low Navy, 1929. This is very visual. I like visual openers. Thank you. That's good. Black Buick rolls up to the diner, pulls up to a stop, car honks twice, no response. Truck rumbles. Car honks again. Engine revs a beat. <laughs> Usually, just say silence for a while. Something that's a little more concrete. I always, you know, you can use the, you know, beat. But you'll find you'll get more out of your writing if you just tell us what was in the beat. What happened in the beat. Another series of agitated honks. Ding! Front door of the dusty cafe opens. From inside, the driver, a beautiful young woman, sprints out. Becky did it. She's like, oh, I get this. Looks up to the passengers. Face for fun. Already told the pair dances across the drive. There's a desert wind. Hey there. She knocks. You're late, but I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Where's the old man? Like a ghost town in there. Boys sure know how to clean house. She glances around the vehicle, glistens with perfection by the sand. Is everything all right, sugar? No beat. Yeah, See, think about how much more atmosphere you can add, like just crickets. the blowing wind, you know, <laughs> <laughs> the sound of crickets. But the, the, you only hear the wind blow. Yeah, whatever. So the door swings open. Rebecca pokes her head inside the car. Yeah. Sitting in the driver's seat is a man dressed in black suits. The man's face is mostly shrouded. His black eyes stare straight forward, reaching from his left ear to his right. He pieces a burlap stitch to his face. Under his nose, sparks of Lyra. This is W.E. Hickman. Rebecca cringes at the sight of him. You. Yes, at the club. Man continues, so that's like a good way to fill the beat. The man continues to silently focus forward. You know, that could have been a beat. Rebecca mm -hmm. scoffs. You know, the man ties his gloved hand around the steering wheel. I guess I should get used to you, huh? Fine. Fine. You know, some of this stuff, you know, you, you have a lot. I, I don't mind the dialogue, action dialogue, but 
there's almost no two connected bits of dialogue. And part of it is because like no one's talking back. Uh, I guess that works. Um, we'll see how that plays out later. The agent rubs against the dry desert air. The man adjusts the mirror. Top of his face moves out of view, bringing the bottom portion into sight. No. Although shadowed still, the piece of burlap can be seen stitched across his face, under his nose, down his chin to cover his mouth. The bottom portion near his chin is left open, stained with dried blood. Boone's smile is drawn across the floor. It looks way creepier with your poofy hair. <laughs> yeah, actually, like, it's like the... That's very creepy. I gotta take a picture of that for you. you know, it, so she does a very terrifying thing. <laughs> Pretty creepy. Pretty creepy. Come easy, go. <laughs> hey, little foxy. Okay. Where were we? Um, the Buick revs through the lot. Route 66 stops and kicks the air. Zooms into this as the car glistens underneath the powerful morning desert sun. About a smile on the road suddenly jolts to a record stop. Faint screaming can be heard from the <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of. What was she expecting, really? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, it's a creepy Sandman guy, and he seems totally legit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what? Except he's being oh, yeah. murdered. <laughs> was Rebecca? Give us a better sense of her plan A. Like, what was, you know, before, I mean, obviously things went awry for Rebecca in this scene. What were her plans before that happened? Give was just a little bit of visual and a little bit of insight into that. So this is just a little bit. <laughs> Let's go over the right. Oh. 85. That's pretty good. Great. Quinn picks up. Okay, she's super dead. Three days earlier. Mm. Always in a little area of flash forwards, flashbacks and stuff. Okay. Uh, tiny hotel room darkness. Okay. Underneath the shadows of a neon light, tiger stripes. The blinds, Detective Lang, or simply Lang. He's in a crappy hotel, crappy area. His face twisted grimace of experience and disappointment. His eyes permanently glued into determination. Again, this is a little bit, and it's sometimes okay in character, but it feels a little bit telly. It feels a little telly. Especially with like disappointment. That'd be hard to. Yeah, just give us a little more action. Like, it's always best, you know, and you're doing that eventually. Like, you know, he, Lin Ling, wakes the clap of, of thunder. Son of a bitch. He stands up straight, his head heaving, perspiration dripping. Hello, Lake. The voice speaks with a deep boom. Oh. Scratches have spoken from a different dimension. Checks himself for Chelf as well. Still be alive, can't I? Can I? I can't still be alive. Lang's bloodshot eyes dart around the area. <sighs> Darkness, nothing comforted he okay, a piece. So like you could just do gentle rain dances against the window and that implies a beat is passed. But then you save some pages. Um so I would just delete that. Um you know, I'll just put that here. Delete the a beat on page four and uh let your action lines do the great work they're doing. El Dorado. I want you to come to my senses. There's a sleepy fox. Oh no, you're reading. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, where am I? Rubs his eyes, distraught. Adam. 
Takes the steps, stumbles sadly. You there? Balances himself. Okay, so there's a lot of this play by play. Dialogue thing, dialogue thing, dialogue thing. And do we don't. I don't think we, not one, need all of these lines to. To get this, you know, Adam, where, like, this could be like, where am I? And then Adam, you there, that could be one, you know, so it seems like this has been expanded out beyond what it needs to be. Um, we don't need this, you know, dialogue, action, dialogue, that much, especially since the scene dynamics aren't changing. Yeah, I mean, it's like we're still in the same scene. Like, you, like nothing, there hasn't been a twist in, like, what everybody knows about the scene. Like, he's discombobulated. We get discombobulation up here. We get, and this is kind of verbal doubling. And then we get discombobulation again. And then we get discombobulation again. And then we get discombobulation again. So you're hitting me with the same scene note, the same scene beat repetitively, and it can work a couple of times. Like the Adam does add some more information, but you could just come combine it into like Adam, you there? Yeah. He looks around. Where are you? Like just combine a couple of them. Yeah, I agree. I don't think this needs to wholly get cut or anything, but definitely compression. I think you can compress your and especially this back and forth, like one line of dialogue, one little thing, action, dot, 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 dot. Like it makes it a little bit of a clunkier read, uh, and it's not as smooth. And then we're still getting the same scene beat down here. I'm not in the mood for games, Adam. You know, Adam! You know, Lumbo's around the room, notices the bottle cap on the ground, no response, stumbles to his feet. You know, he rubs his knuckles against his eyes, brown bags form. So we're getting a whole page. You know, well, I feel that. He takes a sip. Well, I feel all right. I'm done with this BS. He yeah, swings into the darkness. Yeah, so getting a whole. I mean, it's an interesting beat that someone's waking up completely confused, but you need to start changing the way the scene's going. Uh, and it feels like we've been. It feels like a little repetitive by the end of page five. Especially like, because like, there hasn't been a response yet. There hasn't been a response yet. But then, then you say no response. But it's like, yeah, we can kind of get that there's not been a response. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I feel like you just got to trust your reader. They'll get it. I mean, so that, that kind of goes back to even the beat note, like writing a beat. You know, if you just describe the air and stuff, like the reader will intuitively think that some time has passed. Like, you know, you Jeff said it. hello to Danielle. The air, you know, whistled through the trees. It's like it's like you know. you're reading it in real time. So you read it in real time, like you experience it. So if you say something and then you hear it cold, you hear a breeze, like it's happening. So that's like a space of time where there's no talking and all you hear is the breeze. Yeah, I think. Right. Huh. Bird. So yeah, trust trust your trust your reader, trust your writing. I think you're communicating a lot. So um, you know, your reader is a very educated reader now. All, all people do is like watch Netflix and movies, so they mm -hmm. pick up these cues lightning fast. So you, you don't need to spend too much time on them. You hear me, Adam? F you and your games and beat Lang scuffs. <laughs> he said that like four times. Yeah, yeah, yes. F you, all right. I'm done with this already. Uh, I'm and not in the mood for games. Yeah, so we're getting a little bit of repetition here, and almost too much. And and we're still, like, almost a page or two later. Yeah, beat, like, scoffs, wraps his lips, he pauses before taking another sip. I think that could, I mean, you could almost cut that whole last page. Yeah, it was a little repetitive. I think you could start from here. Where am I? You hear me? You know, like, what are you? Where are you? You hear me? And then, yeah. and then. F you and your games, and, and then we're there. And yeah. Beat, Ling scoffs, okay, his eyes suddenly from the shadows, a tall man partially emerges, half of his face in the light, half shot in obscurity. In the darkness, tiny tentacles, scars, creep to a point. Knock that off. Oh, yeah. Uh, you hear Adam's Adam, voice? Yeah. Adam snarls in tears at the light, his voice almost supernatural growl, <laughs> laying stress the opposite. No, that's how, that's his. 
head. That's the bright wing voice. Yeah. The swallows hard by Serpents of Thunder. Laying squits in the darkness, Edward's face barely visible in the darkness. Again, a little bit of repetition. So this is just a style choice. Whenever you have the same noun or the same verb appearing very close, besides like the very common ones like is, you know. But whenever you have that similar word appear very close to each other, it kind of like speed bumps the reader a little bit. I would just find another, you know, against the, you know, shadows, you know, whatever here. Uh, so just using the same image twice kind of like, to time it like hits, hits the reader. So, you know, when you're going to refer reference the same image a few times, give it from a new angle. Um, you know, that goes a lot to recurring images in novels or in longer works of fiction. Is whenever you're going to have a recurring image, always bring or try to bring something new to it every time a reader sees that image. So that they're not, you know, or just refer to it like, you know, in, in Danielle's book, they have these timepieces, which are these kind of like magical watches that let people, you know, influence and change time. So like, you know, as she describes them, you know, you can be like, it's brassy and beautiful and gold. And then, you know, his was elegant. But then once, you know, you either refer to it, okay, he looked at his timepiece, then all those, you know, all those modifiers and adjectives get applied to whatever we use in the future. Or, oh, it's over there. It's, it's just here. Okay. I got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, these yeah, but all those, model, all those modifiers will apply to it. Uh, so then really... Uh, if, if you're going to have like your, like, you know, a recurring image that comes back or anything like that, then, you know, either give it new modifiers just saying like, oh, like, you know, this time piece was black now, like only re-describe something when it changes, uh, uh, or when you have something new to add, that would be the way to think about it. Uh, anyways, that was a bit verbose. Uh, there you are. Okay. Lang smiles. I'm going to have you give me a little heads up before you pull a stunt like this. Like what? Adam blurs out of view. Comes in crisp and clear. I thought we were at Omaha sniffing the trail on that Oklahoma. Oklahoma sniffing the trail on that Okie girl. Gone missing. Thought I was dead. Marches toward the window. Then dressed in suits. And what's the and yet what's this? Ain't no Oklahoma, Adam. Lang takes another swig. He bites his lip. His eyes race from left to right. Where are we? Chicago. Are Chicago? we Chicago? Asking. Where are we? Chicago? Are we sniffing around the East Coast? Is that New York or Atlantic City? And him lowers his gaze. Yeah. And furiously sits to slams the bottom of the ground. It shatters. Remaining liquid pools around his feet. Adam rolls his eyes ambivalent, retreats into the shadows. You drove... drove us here. You tell me what the world You're the detective here. Lang opens his eyes and Adam disappears from view. Lang shakes his head and rubs his eyes. I remember uh, leaving the farm. I don't remember anything after that. And yet, here we are. Lang balls his fist. He stomps toward Adam who quickly retreats further into the shadow. Stop the games, please. Just stop them. Now! Suddenly, from knocking the door, Lang turns. So we should have gotten this knock a lot earlier. This scene is playing the same confused note for a long time. Um, pay, you know, we need to get to this knock a lot earlier. The scene plays the confusion for a long time. Uh, it needed a twist. I'm glad one came, but this feels a little late. Who is it? No response. Okay. The cake lands start Adam, still nothing there. Adam vanishes. From outside another fierce series of knocks. Hold on. Stomps over the door, his fingers dance around the knob, but he refrains from opening it, instead laying glances back over his shoulder. Darkness is all that remains in the spot where Adam once was. Stay put. I can Lord. hear you talking. I know you're in there. I can tell he moves the chain lock. Pulls up the door slightly. What? You said for me to contact you on your package, alright? Package? Yes. Brown box, what is it? It's what you told me to bring to your room when it arrived. I'm just doing what you paid me to do, it's my job. 
No, you don't need. So, like, literally every line of dialogue, except for these two, has action. And these two has action between them. Uh, and those two. Like, so I would really, really just pull. Uh, I feel like you have this very, or there's a strong impulse to over describe. I just pull some of this out. Sim lover, how are you, boss and lady behind boss? This is the foxy lady. We are good. How are you, sim lover? Hopefully, life is good. Thanks for chatting and saying hi. This is the foxy lady, by the way. She does these amazing uh, Bob Ross pictures. So you can follow her Twitch on the foxy lady, and then also. Uh, there's an imger or a picture of one of her most recent works, which is a great work. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if it'll open online. Yeah, it might be kind of weird. Anyways, uh, he pushes a small brown box to the door. How are you doing, Sim, Sim Lover? How's life? Yeah, again, we get the same line try. So a lot of verbal doubling here. Um, and there's not much that's being communicated. This guy seems to have this shadow person with him. We don't need that much room. You know, that, that's kind of what I think, you know, people in modern cinema have been given all the cues. Like, everyone watches so much media. They're ready. Um, so you, you don't need to set this much stuff up. Like, you don't even need to have this argument with the landlord, I don't think. You told me to, like, his... He's confused. So you could just be like, you know, you package? And he's like, yeah, here. And then door closed. We're back into the movement. Like, you know, everything I feel like is running maybe like a half page too long. Um, like, do we need, like, is the landlord going to be value? Like, I don't think just because he's not named, the landlord is going to come back in. Oh, like, it's so you. pretty. I'm in a lot of pain at the moment. Oh, similar slubber. So sorry. I remember you were mentioning that in our last stream that you were experiencing some pain. Well, what kind of pain? Well, yeah, best wishes. Neuropathic? She is a pharmacist, so she can, uh, you know, she probably won't be able to you know, give any recommendations. Is it nerve but... pain or regular pain? Um. Let's see. So I just asked, like, why not just let Lang and Andy deal with it? Mm. Overgrowth of the atrium. What that is? Chris. Ouch. Yeah, it, was, it grows like all over. Like, so painful. Well, hang in there, Sim Lover. Hopefully, you get some good healing yeah. and a. Good meds. doctor. Take some pain meds. I, I trust her judgment. Uh. That's rough. Well, hang in there. And hopefully this stream will take some of your mind off the pain for a little while. Uh, the angle is the package. Anything else? Lands back. Okay. Um, sure. In the Sam Hill, are we? Like you'd have to guess from the dry desert air, we are in the seventh circle of Hades. How far past Oklahoma are we? New Mexico, Arizona, no response. You could look around you. We are in Las Vegas, you jackass. I'm Lord Scales. Las Vegas. Nevada. Red carpet to Tinseltown. Welcome to the West Coast, Bob. Hope your stars are aligned. Why? Why does he have? I'm thinking. Take from this. Parts and closes the door. He quickly locks the chain and turns back. Who's this? Are you able to do any writing during your? Um, I know. I know you've done some writing. Have you been able to, through kind of this ups and downs of pain, been able to get some writing done? Some lover. Hopefully, some good uh, outlet there for you. Looks over his shoulders. I study nothing. This is it a trick? What's in the box, Adam? Beats. Tell me, Adam. What's in the box? Uh, so, so we're on page twelve. 
and like a girl died and then someone got a package that's a long time I'm still con and he's confused <laughs> yeah it's a long time for the same couple of beats um I'm gonna probably call it here uh, but I think the good is like I like the setup up of Adam he's creepy and cool um you know you have a really strong writing style have a strong writing style trust it i think the way you're executing these scenes in terms of the language you're using the way you're using action the, the balance it's good um but you just need to trim half of it um just say what is the least amount in the next draft just ask what is the least amount of work you can do uh you know there no sadly i've been in bed all day with a heating pad Oof. i'll hang in there i can't even imagine that's some painful stuff yeah well well we're glad you're hanging out with us a little bit meds? sim lover any meds to help out and then he's like anti-estrogen <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, yeah, and then the stuff to improve. I would, um, I would say. Speed it up. Yeah, speed it yeah. up. Cut. Um. Um, we needed a little bit more. Um, like. Need to know why to care about the girl and about Lane. Uh, we just need a little bit of their goals. Like, what are their goals? We haven't gotten a goal from any character in this, except trying with Lang. His only goal is a scene goal so far. Well, we kind of got like he's looking for a girl, uh, but that it took a long. Been doing. Yeah, but now he's doing something else, and then the girl kind of goes into a car with a very. But we're also three days earlier from that, so... That's true. So then that, that's not related. Um, so yeah, we just need some of these concrete... It's just like minutes and minutes of him saying thing over and over again, like, Adam. Adam. <laughs> Adam! Oh, Where yeah. Where are you? And one big note is... Uh, it's good that you have action and dialogue, but try to have some sets of dialogue together i don't think you ever have more than two lines of dialogue together and even that's rare without an action line in between um try to um combine dialogue into a flow without action between let the words let the context you know let the words and the context of the dialogue suggest suggest you know what action is transpiring. I was on the depot shot for six months, but now only strong painkillers. I don't know. I don't... Huh? Yeah. Yeah, she knows all the she knows all the science. I'm I'm a meager writer. She's the brains. True. She is the brains. Well, where does our vote fall? I know we're kind of coming to the end here. Probably this. this. I would say so. Yeah. I would say so. I think this one is the strongest, though. There needs to be a lot of trimming. Um, the vote. Oops. Vote is El Dorado. Well cool. done. I mean, we can do another little mini edit, but I think it might be time I think for. It's time. Yeah. Um. So we may play some video games. Yeah. And call it a night. But vote for Hell Dorado Sim Lover. We wish you the best. Uh. And and good healing. You'll be in our thoughts and prayers over deep here. That's breath, brutal. Deep breathing. Breathing. Through the nose. Out through the mouth. I mean, yeah. You you know that more. That helped than... me. I had really. I mean, different. I had really really bad cramps. So in the shower once. My mom was going to take me to the emergency but um, doing some of the like the nose out through the mouth. Oops. 
Okay, I also took ibuprofen. I'm, I'm sure yours is worse, but <laughs> couldn't couldn't hurt. Hey, I trust the pharmacist. Um, yeah, she's very. Pharmacy I don't, student. <laughs> pharmacy student. It's yeah. Uh, but yeah, I only have one, you know, I'm only a story guy. She has multi talents where she reads stories and is a very good critical eye. And she's also a very talented pharmacy student. Um, and, you know, look at all those points I just earned for flattery. Uh, anyways, uh, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank you for coming and, and, and swinging by in the midst of your pain, Sim yeah. Lover. That is really nice and nice to know that you're, that you, uh, hopefully we can help ease assuage the, the the pain a little bit and hopefully have some fun yeah. um and i'll be on i'll probably be streaming a lot tomorrow a lot of writing uh so come by tomorrow and uh, we'll be around as well so hopefully that will help um just kind of take your mind off things because that is sometimes at least for me a very helpful cure anyways best wishes uh and then great job to the writers tonight notorious a lot of fun okay. needs to uh you know Focus on the story. Focus on the story. Uh, I think you have such a cool premise, but um, there's so much flash that it just loses uh, its footing. Uh, and then Hell Dorado, good premise, good writing, very solid style, but just need to trust your reader, trim things down a little bit. Though you did win the vote, so I do think you were a little bit ahead in terms of just that writing style was much clearer. Clarity is king. Clarity is king, and at least you were clear, even though, albeit, you know, might just need to trim some of those repetitions out. Uh, anyways, we're going to post this up on Script Shadow, so um, if you want to read, you know, if anybody's watching this and hasn't heard of Script Shadow, it's really great. Um, that's uh, scriptshadow.net. That's the uh, website where these are posted. If you liked one of them or you disagree with us, put your vote there as well. <laughs> and uh, this suits, hey, we don't agree with Final Boss. They're dumb. They're real dumb and they smell. <laughs> uh, anyways, y'all, take awesome. care. Uh, get well soon, some lover. And yeah. thank you for hanging out with us. And uh, have a good night. And great job to the writers. Yay.